hi and welcome back to gazelle vlog guys this is really really a long video i know i know don't get me wrong i think even one hour would not be enough to tell you about iceland even if it's, it was a short trip you know i think there's still a lot to add in this video so here is us i mean here we are me and my partner tim we are on our plane on board uh, i am planning to give you some tips and advices obviously if you are going to iceland on a boat uh, as you know it's a really expensive country so i try to put everything all the information you need you know from the bus stations from how to get a bus from the airport uh, obviously it will reduce your cost to get i think it's it's my idea uh, as i said as a budget trip if you want to make it to iceland um, so I'm going to give you all this, uh, all the details you would need to know uh, how to get to Reykjavik uh, city centre from Reykjavik airport. And this is the sky on the UK, guys. This is still the UK. Don't worry. I see how gorgeous it is. Um, th this was my view from um, the airplane. And honestly, it was gorgeous. So we're still not um, in Iceland, as you can see in this bit of the video uh, i'm going to give you more details uh, so keep watching and please don't get tired i know one hour seems so long uh, but try not to skip uh, all the bits of the video because i've all, uh, obviously added uh, good information i think maybe you would need to know if you're traveling to uh, Iceland and even places to go and eat um, and honestly like just short with uh, short holiday no short video obviously short holiday um but a lot to say um so keep watching and listen to this video and not li really listen just watch and listen to what i say and uh, i hope you enjoy let's go This is Reykjavik Airport. I'm going to show you some of the prices over there right at the airport. So this is the price for a bottle of water in Reykjavik, which is in Icelandic Krona. This is Viking beer, which is really nice. Don't forget, try it on. It's perfect. This is the price for a pack of Viking beer. Then we went out of the, the actual building, the airport building, and this is right in front of the airport. Uh, we were going to change some money and these are my socks just I don't know why I wanted to show you my socks as well now let's have a look at some Icelandic corona the the money in there is pretty cool like you see a lot of zeros over there and make sure you're not going to get confused by the zeros you see in there uh, it's quite fun and sometimes you go to the super uh, you would have gone uh, we would have gone to the supermarket and there were like a lot of zeros like you know four thousand or five thousand something um but yeah let's go to the bus station this is where you're going to catch a bus from Reykjavik airport to Reykjavik city center this is the schedule that you're supposed to find out our bus would have been there in the next uh, almost an hour or so so this is just a building outside of the airport somewhere around the car park uh, we had to go back to the actual uh, airport building and that's the actual airport building as you can see right there so we went back there have a coffee we just chilled out a bit until the bus came out and um, that's the coffee i think how much was it i don't remember i can tell you in the description below um it, they, they were doing really great sandwiches now let's hit the road and go to Reykjavik city center 
Um, I'm going to give you more details because when you actually go to Reykjavik, don't think that you are literally going to Reykjavik city center. So from Reykjavik airport, you are going to another bus station, which you will see the name in there. And look at that. Just wanted to film it for you. That's a um, US Air Force uh, flight jet, uh, which was right there. <laughs> so this is the schedule that you can see literally right there from um, uh, Reykjavik airport you go to Fjordov uh, bus station and then from there you would catch the bus to go to Reykjavik city center and that car was really interesting that's why I filmed it this is literally the way to go to Reykjavik city center actually our hotel to be honest uh, so I sort of filming a bit from the city center uh, after we got the bus second bus from Fjordov to city center Reykjavik city center this is um the city as you see uh, we were walking to our hotel such a beautiful city Reykjavik is absolutely gorgeous i loved it i better stop talking and let you watch the rest of the film Right, so this is the very first night we got to Reykjavik. This is the Rainbow Street. A lot of people take lots of pictures in there. This is like a kind of Instagram place to go. Uh, daytime, nighttime. I mean, um, I've been there both times, day and night. It looks gorgeous. It really is pretty. Um, and l we are going to the cathedral in there. Oh, actually, I'm just going to tell you, I loved these. <laughs> Honestly, jewelry's in there. So gorgeous. Right, let's walk to the church and I'm going to give you the name of that. while I was trying to record all these videos especially at night time or even daytime in Iceland my hands were almost freezing so it's really difficult to take your hands out without gloves in there make sure you definitely wear proper gloves when you go there And a really nice pop uh, over there. I love the decorations, all those paintings, everything on the wall. Uh, it's right in the city center of Reykjavik. So this is the first day after last night, well the video I showed you, uh, we got to the wrong bus and apparently it turned out that some other travelers were getting uh, onto the wrong bus. So we had to go to another bus station waiting for our actual bus to come and take us and going for the Golden Circle tour. That was really funny. That mist that you can see, this is actually redirecting the geothermal water and it directs it to people's houses to keep their houses warm. That's amazing.
Hardwick Iceland's National Seismic Monitoring Network detects around 500 earthquakes, thousands if there are seismic events in any of the active volcanoes. As you know, Iceland's got active volcanoes so people can feel sometimes like based on this video i just uh, showed you people can sometimes feel it and they actually had uh, earthquakes so here you can actually uh, press the buttons in there and you can see which parts of iceland can feel uh, can see the uh, earthquakes this is the kind of damage that the earthquake made in, um, I believe it was in um, Reykjavik, I'm not sure if I'm saying it wrong, please forgive me. But let's go and see, like you can actually find the locations of where the earthquakes happen in Iceland. Uh, it's quite interesting, so make sure if you are going on your golden tour, you visit this place. Right, so everyone thinks that Icelandic people actually eat horse meat. Um, I think some parts of the country still do. Uh, but based on what our tour leader Thomas told us, uh, recently people just breed in these horses for fun as a hobby. And um, these are being exported to other parts of uh, Europe. These pony sites, sometimes even bigger, obviously bigger as you can see, uh, they are quite long-lived and hardy. Trust me, when I was filming this video for you, my fingers were almost numb and it was really freezing. So you can see how strong these horses are. And they are also a bit shy. We were trying to feed them, but you know, see, they're kind of shy. They're very cute though. Enjoy the rest of the film. Now this is Kerith or Kerit. This is a volcanic crater lake and if you are booking your Golden Circle tour, this place is definitely one of the places you would visit. It is now believed that Kerith was a cone volcano which erupted and emptied its magma reserve. So this is right now, when we got close to it, it's uh, literally quite frosted, it's frozen, like a frozen lake. Uh, I filmed it, you can also listen to that bit. Let's go.
give this entry to your ass you haven't yet. And tomato plant needs uh, 17 hours of daylight. And as in Iceland, uh, we don't have so much daylight during uh, winter time. So they need this lamps and it needs so much energy, just this farm. So they have their own geothermal outside wow. and a hot spring. And wow. they take also a hot water from there to heat up the place. As you see in all these white pipes all around uh, containing hot water for house heating to keep the ideal temperature around 24 Celsius. That's like the tomato fruit plant really loves that. Eight times more active than honeybees. Uh, the problem with uh, these bees, they lay eggs and those things like on seven weeks. So every seven weeks they get new new boxes. Uh, so the, the bees is actually very clever. It flies around and finds a, a plant that has not been pollinated and then it leaves a hormone behind. So the flies are always looking for some plant with no hormone that they leave behind. So they don't have to put any pesticide on it. They also import a little bee, little fly, little green fly, and that goes around and eats the bad flies. They're producing 2,000 kilos of tomatoes every day. That is been ready so that, oh, early morning to be driven to supermarkets in Reykjavik. And as you can see here, they go back and forward and they're hand picking these cherry. I'd like to walk with you to the bar and show you a menu that is like really, really special. Tomato beer? What? I don't know. Flutty Mary, Virgin Mary, Happy Mary, Healthy Mary, Mary Poppins. Wow. And then you look at tomato cheesecake, tomato ice cream, tomato apple pie, and tomato cooked soccer. So, like I say, it's a very interesting place. Mr. Brad. Thank you. Can we take a bread? Yes, you can grab one piece of bread and also basil, yeah. napkins, and spoons. Thank you. Can I get one point of Uh, use the scissors, I think. The scissors over there. And cut it with the scissors, maybe. As much as you want. So now we are on our way to go to another waterfall. Um, this is not the Golfos, which is the bigger waterfall, which is the famous one. This is Faxi Falls, uh, which is fairly smaller, but trust me, around Reykjavik, you can find amazing waterfalls. We were quite lucky that Tommy, our tour leader, took us to this really amazing waterfalls. 
and I'm gonna show you some more footage of it. Um, just enjoy this. Now this is our way to Golfos waterfall. As you can see, this was absolutely windy. And uh, I was almost uh, blown out by the wind, to be honest. And taking my phone in my hand, it was absolutely impossible. But I just wanted to film it to show you. And you can somehow see the rainbow over there. Everyone was almost blown out by the wind. Uh, but it's worth it, honestly. It was gorgeous. You can also see almost everything's icy. And even you were feeling the icy splashes into your face. Um, it's just so gorgeous.
and we got to Geyser, or I'm not sure, maybe I am pronouncing it wrong, Geyser, uh, the highly active Geyser area, uh, which was the entire Golden Tour, Golden Circle Tour. Uh, these are natural phenomenon of boiling mud pools, uh, which they're um, exploding geysers, basically. The most active geyser is apparently a Suruku, which uh, spouts water up to 30 meters into air every few minutes. Uh, I think it was every three to five minutes, so that's why I'm literally just filming it now so that I can show you. This is quite far away from the actual geyser. We got closer to it. I can show you exactly how it boils and it comes up and it is really gorgeous. Uh, just to let you know, uh, it smells a bit weird. Um, I almost stank, basically. Uh, right, let's go and see when this case wants to work. Watch out.
Right, so we are um, literally on a different place. This view uh, was close to Fink Valley. I'm not sure if it's actually the place. However, uh, Tom took us to this place to show us exactly, um, well, to realize the differences um, of the tectonic plates, which was the uh, American tectonic plates, uh, American plate, uh, which was getting separated from the Eurasia uh, plate. He was explaining it and uh, i've actually made some more videos when we get to that place you can see it that was another fantastic place uh, i filmed all the signboards and everything you can read all the information and get to know this place much better this place was another place where you can visit to see auroras and apparently based on what tom was telling us uh, this place could be at times a perfect place to see auroras to spot it much better from this place and that's that's a that's a lake right there you can see it, it was an amazing view I also wanted to add this. Thank you, Tom. He was a great tour leader. So here he was just telling us where to stand and uh, how to take pictures. And he was even taking pictures from us. He knew the best spots um, of how to take a picture, where to stay for a picture. Um, honestly, he was amazing. And thank you very much for being a great tour leader. And this was our final stop for our Golden Circle Tour. The final destination, which was amazing. Uh, I suppose they actually call it the Pink Valley. That's um, how it should be. I don't know if um, I'm uh, pronouncing it right. Uh, let, let's just say this is called a Parliament Plain. So uh, that's what they call it. Beautiful and amazing. And watch the rest of the video. Uh, I actually have got more to show you uh, until the of the well, basically until the end of the video. I don't even know what to say because um, it's been a long video. Uh, but yes, enjoy. This place was amazing. It literally felt like that you were standing right in the middle of two continents. That was incredible. Uh, I put all the information in the description. Uh, you can also see the signboards and guides uh, of this place. Um, obviously, you can find more information from their website too. Let's go for Aurora hunting. This is Ziggy. Ziggy explains all the bits, details, everything about auroras, how they form, what they are, an uh, incredible phenom phenomenon uh, in the world. And uh, he took us somewhere far away from the city center, which was a really nice place. But basically it was really windy and it was really, really difficult to see auroras that night. These pictures are the ones that I took from my mobile and it was really difficult to even figure out how to take pictures. 
Uh, and let me tell you something actually, when you see auroras, you don't even realize with your own eyes it is actually aurora, unless you see it with your own phone. These pictures are the ones that uh, Ziggy took from us. And the company rule is that they have to take a picture from you where you can see auroras. Now, these pictures, as you can see, like this one and the previous one. Uh, what we did, uh, because we were not satisfied with the tour and we wanted to see even more, uh, we hired a car just literally two days before we left Iceland. Uh, these pictures are from my phone. We hired a car, we went to a viewpoint in Reykjavik. That place is almost 15 or maybe less, 10 minutes away from Reykjavik city center. You can get out of the city center and it was a really nice uh, part of the city but it was windy again difficult to take a picture even getting out of the car you can see my phone reflections even on some of these pictures I took these pictures with my iPhone 11 Pro Max as you can see it's not very professional and um, I think just for me to see it it was just magical uh, Tim stayed out to take some pictures but obviously as soon as you were getting out of the car your hands were easily frozen and completely numb. I couldn't even feel my uh, fingers for a few minutes after that. Now after this we went to, the day after I think, we went to Sky Lagoon. Uh, I will be showing you more. Let's stay with me and please don't get tired. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I think I made a mistake. So basically this is the day that we visited um, National Museum uh, of Iceland, which was in Reykjavik. We had a walk around the city um, and uh, all these Icelandic uh, beautiful swans were there. Uh, I didn't want to get close to them because I've heard that quite, they're quite aggressive. Um, so yes, this is a day that we actually visited the National Museum of Iceland in Reykjavik. Uh, the, 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 I think our final day, I don't think, I'm sure our final day was a day that we went to a Sky Lagoon. So enjoy!
what you saw was um, actually carving on whalebone. This is our last day and this is a Sky Lagoon. Uh, we decided to visit the Sky Lagoon on our last day because we were thinking it would give us a better relaxing and nice feeling before our flight back home to the UK. And I actually got some footage from um, the Sky Lagoon. When you go um, to change your clothes, obviously, and then you can't film anything. Uh, so I started filming where we started going into the lagoon. And this is where that moment begins. actually our official final day in Reykjavik, Iceland. We are heading back to the airport. This is the car we hired. So we hired the car from Reykjavik city center and we're going to give the car back uh, to their station uh, at the airport. Uh, when we wanted to go to the petrol, we couldn't actually fill the tank because the tank lid was literally frozen and we didn't know how to open it. So they charged us there and um, they just told us that you need to pour some hot water, apparently, to let the lid uh, be open and then this is um, the airport I filmed this bit for you it's really useful information you can read it carefully and uh, thank you very much for watching this video I will be traveling more and I will be making more videos vlog videos I promise I'm not going to make it so long like this this was really really incredible I just wanted to let you know um, actually just tell me if the information I gave you was actually useful enough or not and thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, make that bell just go on the ring no I'm joking uh, to make sure that you will be notified for my next videos when I'm going to upload my next videos thank you